would like to add one point, which is I don't think sustainability is enough any longer. It's, it's a, a concept that has been found wanting in a major way in recent years because we have lost so much since the term was invented. We have wrecked forests. We have lost something like 24 billion tons of soil every year. We have damaged the, the oceans. We are damaging the atmosphere. We're damaging communities. I think we need to now think about regenerating communities in the valleys and wells. We need to ha avoid the destruction of soils that I see being washed down in the River Wye every when there's a rain, rain, rainstorm up in up in the hills and wells. And we really need to rethink whether or not sustainability is sufficient as a concept any longer. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think the difficulty with thinking that you can replace one long word with another long word <laughs> um, is that at the end of the day, it has to be about people engaging with this at the community level, which is why I was so impressed to see what you know, Mary was doing. I've been talking for many years about growing more in Wales, about the fact that we don't grow enough for our own population in the United Kingdom. And then Mary and all her friends and, and people in Todmorland just get on and do it. <laughs> so it's that whole thing about governments giving permission and people doing. And whereas I fully agree that we need to regenerate, I would say that in Welsh legislation, the only country in the world that has this in legislation, that notion of sustainable development being at the heart of government, if we define sustainable development in a way that encompasses regeneration for a future, that becomes the definition of sustainable development in Wales. And that can only be arrived at by the dialogue with the Welsh people. So I think it is about getting the dialogue around it. And I hope that as a small nation, uh, that in Wales we can lead the way to demonstrate that if you put something in law and mean it, and act upon it, you can change the way that we take our future forward. I would say Mary is involved in the regeneration business rather than in the sustainability business. Uh, yeah, I haven't got anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you've told us a lot. Oh, seriously, come on, Mary. Um, I'd just say this, because I've got a great chance to say it, because you all look a bit posh. The prisons are actually full, so you've got no excuse just to get on with it. But yeah. look what you're doing is about regenerating community, you know. Uh, well, I, I want to avoid too much thinking, too much talking, <laughs> uh, too much <laughs> semantics about the words. There's so much, honestly, trust me, it's not a dress rehearsal. There is so much work to be done. There are, the, the gap between rich and poor is growing every day. And the gap between those who've never felt, smelt, touched, eaten anything decent is enormous. So I have no time for thinking, only doing. Yeah. Can I? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, can I, can I say one other thing? As a teacher, I never used to use one term to describe anything to different groups of people. And I haven't done in my adult life either. And I just think it's, you know, often I'm, when I'm talking to students, I'm not talking about sustainable development. I'm talking about giving them the skills for the future. I'm talking about common sense. I'm talking about relevance. And the fact that I think that all comes under sustainability um, doesn't matter because it's actually about saying let's future proof what we do and if we future proof we will regenerate we will be sustainable we will be responsible for the environment we will come and resilient and and we will deal with social justice and we've got to do all those things together and we do not want to argue about the terms we just need to each play our part in making that happen Um, so just a question about um, the concept of going slow. Sorry, shall I stand up? Yeah. Um, nice concept, but in the face of climate change and the impending impacts, how do we marry the going slow with the need for action? What was the question? The question is, with the pace of climate change and the proposition of going slow, 
How do you marry this? Yes. <clears throat> um, my comment on that would be that things are urgent, but urgency does not mean impatience. More the matters are urgent, more patience is needed. Like if in a theater with a fire, matter is urgent to get out of it, but if you are stampede, you will kill more people in stampede than the fire will kill. So, although climate change is a very urgent problem, nobody would disagree with it, but we have to build communities, we have to get on with doing things, and, uh, and in today's talk, many speakers have spoken about that. So, instead of worrying about what are we going to do with climate change, and can we not, time is running out, I don't think impatience can lead us very far. So, all this very urgent, let's get on with it. Time is now to do whatever you can do. Every one of us can do something. And if we take responsibility to reduce our carbon um, footprint, at the same time, uh, communicate, promote, build a movement, uh, create public opinion, put pressure on government, put pressure on businesses, whatever you can do, just start doing it without worrying and, and uh, thinking that we haven't got time to do it. This is, <coughs> Big yeah, I've been waiting for a long time, yes, that's fine. <laughs> and I'm impatient. If I, if I didn't do what I could do, I would fall into despair. But that's not my question. So if you want to give somebody else a question no, no, first. No. It is mainly a question for Herbie, I think. You talked about the circular economy and um, recycling, whatever. <coughs> Now, the problem is that there are so many uh, things which are made of composite material, plastic and wood, or plastic and whatever, and they're not, you cannot recycle them. It's even the case with wind turbines. So, what would be the solution? What can we do with all those wind turbines in, say, 30 years? Yeah, what, how do you actually create a sustainable, what is for me, a sustainable yeah. economy where you put, take, do not take more out than you put in, yeah. and cetera. Well, I mean, it, more rubbish. industry is about what else, about combining things, and increasingly it's become an ever more complex process of, you know, to just take our packaging, which consists of so many different types of materials. But certainly, I mean, we had earlier on here in, in this room a discussion about recycling technologies. And certainly, as the production processes become more sophisticated, if that's the right term, so do the recycling technologies. But my concern is, above all else, number one is carbon recycling. You know, that is the critical issue. I mean, it's about our relationship with nature and us taking from nature and not giving back to her. That, I think, is the first order of priority. And I certainly think that your work demonstrates that very vividly, how you make soil in a town, how you get back to growing land and uh, food in, in your region, how to build community connections out of these processes, how you can create a culture of regenerative living within, within your locality. So certainly that natural cycle, biological cycle, I think we can address quite effectively right now if you're serious about it. When it comes to recycling materials from industry, that is certainly a more difficult process. But for instance, in the case of plastics, it is becoming clear you can make sandwiches out of different types of plastics in order to make park benches, in order to make fence posts, uh, and so on and so forth. You can take some of the stuff that's difficult to recycle and use it in, in building materials. And so certainly, when people are serious about taking this forward, they can find ways of using complex composite materials in a more effective ways than, than perhaps is immediately apparent. When it comes to wind turbines, first of all, they consist of steel towers. So the steel can be reused or recycled. When it comes to the inlets of wind turbines or the blades, yeah, then it becomes harder. But there again, I mean, rare earths that are used in, in wind turbines will all invariably be extracted to be used for other purposes in 30 years' time. So, I mean, it is a major issue, and we are very much in, uh, faced with entropy processes of running down uh, resources 
and uh, not easily recovering them. But we have to do the best we can. At the same time, there's the new science of circular systems, the cradle-to-cradle -cradle production systems, biomimicry and these kind of processes that are beginning to be taken much more seriously. So there is likely to be changes in industry and in, in design processes uh, in the very near future as well. In fact, they've already started. I hope that answers your question. I'm hoping that there's a bit of a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, what we're seeing in Turkey are these people saying, we love this park, we don't want a supermarket on it. I'm hoping that what is unfolding there isn't more drastic than maybe I'm simplistically seeing, but I think there's a groundswell with our young people. They don't want things the way they are. Snowden that chap who's hiding, you know, has seen a world that is terrifying. Um, and, you know, I would say, Rusatish, you know, we love our little parks, we love our open spaces, and to stand up and say that they're important. Um, and the word sustainable is a kind of cold, hard word somehow that doesn't bring in this joy of nature and the joy of, of our little precious places that we should revere and keep precious. Uh, is that a question? Um, <laughs> maybe say, asking you, do you not see a groundswell of something that says, no, we're not going to have this anymore? Silence. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is that, as Mary says, <clears throat> different people are going to use different words. Invent a word which really uh, makes you feel, will be inspiring for young people. Um, uh, James Lovelock invented Gaia. Wonderful. We don't have to say that we have to invent something else. He did it. Arnie Ness said, deep ecology. I say so and so society. You invent a word which you think will inspire people and work with it. So I don't think we need to get too much um, obsessed with language. Language is not the, the reality. Language is only a translation of reality. Map is not the reality. If you have a map of Bristol, there are many different kinds of maps, but Bristol is reality. So language is only a map to communicate something. And we can have many maps. And the different people will put different things. Um, some religious people will put a church in the map, and, and some BP will produce more um, their, uh, kind of uh, petrol station maps. So it depends on how you want to communicate your vision, your values, your commitment, your passion. Invent language. Uh, and it doesn't matter how many people will take it and, and go with it. So, so yes, if sustainability doesn't appeal to you, don't worry, invent something else. Uh, I try to answer as well. I think I can understand yet you feel uncomfortable with the word sustainability. It's a technocrat's item. And uh, we have to be careful if everybody uses it. And I think that was something that Herbie put out that very opposite interests are running under the headline, we are sustainable. And we had the same thing with ecology, etc. years before. Um, I think it's necessary to be authentic and the people of Taksim Place in Istanbul just have an authentic problem, and they fight for that. Um, I've been in Taksim four weeks ago, and uh, I've been looking to this construction site and all that. Um, but what we together, and, and my respect to the organizers of this conference or this uh, lecture is, that we have all different skills, and we have different jobs, and I think we're all very professional, even if you 
look like not professional, but you are very professional in my point of view, in the sense that we, that we go in, the, in a direction with different tasks. So you may have no time for thinking, you're wonderful in thinking, you should go on thinking. Uh, I'm an advisor to mayors and several cities at once and uh, to governors and I will do my job and uh, Herbie is connecting internationally uh, what sustainable approach goes on. Uh, so I think the, the, the interests are so complex that we need a work share between different skills and but important is that we go in one direction. And um, I would say the general uh, thing that you see, if you see the media reports about Taksim Place is that I guess most of the reporters put that right, what happens there. But they also tell you the complex political story of governance, government, ruling in Turkey, democracy coming up, etc. So it's, it's a good example that uh, it's not only the park or the environment, it's always embedded in a real political situation, etc. So if, if I'm talking about the war, it's the real political combination which just happens there and which had ups and downs in the last 20 years. And if you talk about southwest of Britain, it's very special what's here, the construction and what could be done here. Um, but I think we are all needed to do so. Right. Can I, I thought I heard you say, do you hear a groundswell of goodness? Well, for many, many years of my life, I worked with misery, absolute horribleness and misery. And, and about six years ago, I thought I'm going to focus my mind on kindness. And let me tell you, every single day, I notice a groundswell of goodness, of loveliness, of kindness, because I opened my eyes to it. And I truly, absolutely believe that we're hardwired to be kind, to be good, to be respectful, to love our environment. So ever since I started to look hard for goodness and kindness, I'm surrounded by it. Sorry, we're coming to an end now. And I, I just love what the, 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 the breadth of what Mary had to say. And I just wonder if each of you would like to make just a sort of any kind of sort of final final thoughts to us. And then we've got a very special ending. And I'm sorry I've run out of time for the questions, but apologize. Well, maybe end with one more word, which is love. Because it's love of people, love of nature, love of the food that we grow, love of future generations, love of the, the people we come from, the communities we come from. That, I think, as, the, as, a, as a motivation, as a, as a feeling, as something that drives us forward to my mind, really is what comes out of our discussions today. So I don't think I wouldn't want to say any more. It's just really what that love needs to, and is really, if we are looking closely, the primary motivating factor. Thanks. I'm, I would think that just don't let anybody say no. <laughs> just, just keep going. I mean, I have to say, you all have seen Yes Minister. We saw a, a slide up about it, about up, um, up about it earlier. I remember when I first became a minister. You know, the civil servants told told me that actually they were in charge. <laughs> You know, ministers weren't in charge. The ministers may think they are in charge, minister, but, you know, we run the government. Like, no, no, no. No, this is going to change. Don't let people say no. The civil servants did not want me to introduce recycling legislation, which will actually change what can be recycled. If, you, if government starts saying they will not allow certain products to go into landfill, then technology will drive innovation to stop those products going into landfills. So governments have a major role for those kinds of things. So don't allow people to say no 
and keep believing what you believe because that's what sustained me over the last 12 years. I came into the assembly partly because it wanted to be a different kind of political institution and every single major issue that I managed to get through the assembly, including the Wales Coast Path, was done with all party support and all those, though all those initiatives are still there because it was not done in a bipartisan way. I never allowed somebody to stop me by saying it couldn't be done. So believe in it and just get on and do it. Thank you. <clears throat> That's a wonderful, wonderful call for action. And um, uh, <clears throat> I would like to use another L word after love is leadership. And uh, Mary talked about, not Mary, Jane talked about uh, bottom down and no, what a top, top down, yeah. bottom up, yeah. top down, bottom up. We are here more sort of bottom up people because we are not in the government so we can't bring too much from um, top down. So leadership will come from all of us here. We are all, you are all potential leaders. So we should not wait for governments or big leaders or some messiah or some prophet to come and solve the problem of biodiversity, climate change, population explosion, all these big, big issues that we have talked about. Take the leadership in your hand, lead your own life in the right direction, inspire, like your name of your organization, inspire each other. And I have created a little website called Small World Big Ideas as a book of small world big ideas and tell your story on this website how what you are doing how you are doing it because the personal stories will inspire other people unsung heroes telling their stories and inspiring each other so take the leadership in your hand inspire each other we can make a better world together thank you um maybe it's good to have the goal to be good neighbors and to behave like we expect to be good neighbors and in this context uh, cooperation between different people between different interests different institution different uh, um, situation helps and uh, cooperation happens every day and so it's possible Thank you. Let's hear it for them. Thank you, our speakers. <laughs> Thank you, Mary, Herbie, Jane, Satish, Michael, and of course, Bob and Dave. <laughs> <laughs>